What's going on? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel helping you take your tech to the next level. In today's video, we're going to be covering the best OBS Studio settings for 1080p, for 30fps, and 60fps. Also, a little disclaimer before we get started, I will not be covering how to set up scenes, so like putting your webcam and stuff in the video, but we'll be going over that in separate videos, and we'll be making separate videos on how to set up scenes, how to live stream, and use stuff like Twitch alerts and stuff like that in the future. Also, if you're wondering what version of OBS I'm using, I'm using 17.0.2. It's free to use and the link will be in the description down below for you to download. All right, so now that you have OBS Studio open, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up your settings. You can locate that from the bottom right hand corner or you can go to the top left, click on file and then click on settings. It will open the settings menu just like this. The first tab that we're gonna be messing with is the general tab. There are a bunch of different ones and some of these we actually won't be messing with today. And the only thing I really wanna focus on in the general tab is that I'm using the dark theme instead of the default theme. This is just gonna make it look darker in all the menus. Other than that, there's not gonna be any difference or any settings, so if you wanna use default, just go right ahead. Now we're gonna be skipping the streaming settings because we're not messing with that in this video. I will be making a video in the future covering 1080p 30fps and 60fps streaming, as well as probably covering 720p streaming in it because streaming at 720p is still a viable thing for a lot of people with slow bandwidth speeds. Moving over to our output tab, there is some stuff in here that we're definitely gonna be wanting to mess with. And the first thing I suggest is changing your output mode from simple to advanced. So simple is gonna look like this, Advanced gonna look like this. There's a lot more. We're gonna be skipping the streaming settings under the Advanced tab. The reason why we're doing this is because we're not messing with any of this, and you can set up encoder settings specifically for streaming and recording, but like I said, we're not messing with that in this video. So next, we're moving over to the Recording tab. Under there, we're gonna be using the standard type of output, and we're gonna be selecting our recording path. I've just got mine set to recorded footage, video footage, OBS. And what this is do, gonna do is it's just gonna put all my recordings in a separate folder. You can generate the file name in the advanced settings and I'll show you where that's at in a moment. The recording format I'm gonna be using is MP4. You could use other recording formats. I suggest MP4 because it works so well with other video uh, editors and things like that. It, it's just a really acceptable and widely used format and because it also selects multi-track recording. And what this lets you do is it lets you output actually multiple tracks of audio. So you can have a separate audio track for gameplay, um, a separate audio track for your commentary, and say your friends, music, and so on. I'm not gonna be covering multi-track audio recording in this video, but I will in a future video. So let me know if you guys are interested in that in the comment section down below. The encoder settings I'm gonna be using is NVENC H.264. What these settings are, they are NVIDIA graphics card settings, and they're gonna actually use your GPU to help you record. If you don't have a NVIDIA graphics card, don't sweat, you might not see this in your dropdown. If you do have an AMD graphics card, I'm not sure if they have complete support for them yet, but there might be a setting under here as well. I do not suggest using the stream encoder because it's gonna use the same settings from the streaming tab, and it's probably not gonna look near as good. Now you can use the X264, and this is just gonna use your CPU, and I will advise you that this will use a lot more CPU usage using this, but if you get a good enough CPU, go for it. As far as the out scale, we're gonna leave this at 1920 by 1080 because that's the resolution we have set and that's what we wanna output to. Now if you wanted to output to something else, for example, you could select that in this drop down below, but we're gonna be using 1920 by 1080. We will not be using any custom settings here, so you can disregard that. The rate control, we're gonna be setting to CBR, which is known as constant bit rate. You could use something like variable bit rate, but the problem with that, or the VBR, the problem with that is you're going to run into frame rate issues, and that is a definitely a big problem with audio desyncing and stuff like that, so I suggest constant bit rate all the way, and your video is gonna look great throughout. And the bit rate I suggest for 1080p, 60 FPS is 40,000. If you're wanting to use, say, 30 FPS, I suggest anywhere from 15 to 20,000. That works really well. As far as keyframe uh, key intervals, I suggest zero, and your preset's gonna be set to default, profile main, level auto, and if you are using your graphics card and it's going good, I suggest two-pass encoding. If you're using your CPU and it's doing good, I suggest two-pass encoding. If for some reason whatsoever you're rendering or you're uh, recording with this and you have a problem and you see your CPUs being used quite a bit down here, I definitely suggest unchecking this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help it run a little bit smoother. 
GPU set to zero, B frame set to two, and you're looking good for your recording tab. Now we're gonna move over to the audio tab and under here I just suggest putting everything to 320. Why? You're gonna get just as good audio as you can get in the output section. Moving over to audio, all I really suggest is making sure that you have the right sample rate. You can check this by going down here to your start menu and typing in audio and you can go to manage your audio devices and you'll see something like this and what you're going to want to do is go to your recording tab and you're going to want to find the microphone that you're recording your audio with and what you're going to want to do is say mine's the microphone ATR you're going to right click go to properties and you're going to go to the advanced tab and this is going to show you the format and the bit rate that is being used for your microphone and this is also going to help keep your videos from getting desynced over time so make sure you have that and you're going to get the best quality out of your microphone which you want to do by default some microphones support both and you're just going to want to go with whatever you're recording with so i've got mine set to this for better quality so i'll make sure that is actually checked right here it's my sample rate in obs studio my channels are set to stereo so i have stereo surround um, what this is going to do is if I've got gameplay and I'm wearing a headset and somebody shoots from my left side, it's going to play on their left side of their speakers so they actually can be self-aware of what's going on. Default audio device, I suggest you know setting that to whatever you're hearing your game sound from. So if you're hearing your game sound from your headset, set that to your headset. If you're hearing it from your speakers, set that to your speakers. Your microphone, well, this is the microphone you're recording with. As you can see, mine's set to ATR USB. And I did say that I was using multi-track audio recording, so I do have my headset set as a backup and um, my friend's audio set there as well. So I can actually output and adjust all those audios and my editing program all separately. As far as this settings right down here, these are just push to mute and push to talk settings. You can set those up if you need them. They're very self-explanatory and um, you just set those up and you'll uh, enable them with a hotkey. And whenever you push that button, it'll mute the mic, it'll unmute it. It's really simple. Next, moving over to the video tab, what I suggest is 1920 by 1080 for the base resolution. This is going to make sure your scene back here is actually set to uh, 1080p resolution, and you're going to set your output to 1080p as well. That makes sure this isn't going to be compressed to something different, and uh, you don't have to worry about the downscale filter if you're uh, using the same resolution that's right up here. As far as the FPS, if you're using 60, like I said, I'd recommend 40,000 bit rate. If you're using 30, I would recommend anywhere from 15,000 to 20,000. Just depends on what your computer can do and what you think looks good. Now the hotkeys, you can actually set these. I actually don't have these set because I'll accidentally hit them whenever I'm typing every once in a while, but you can actually set keys up. So if you wanna start streaming whenever you hit a key, you could set that to page up and one to page down, or you could do the same thing for recording. This is all up to you as far as that goes, and um, there's not too much more to cover here. Lastly, moving to your advanced tab, the first thing you're going to want to make sure is your process priority is set to above normal. This is going to make sure your video encoding is a major priority for your system so your video doesn't come back stuttered or anything like that. I've got my renderer set to direct uh, 3D11. You could use OpenGL, just whichever works for you. I don't have a video adapter set. Uh, my color format's NV12, uh, YUV709, YUV color range full. And this is just gonna make sure that the colors come out looking better. As far as the recording, the file name formatting, I just got gameplay put in there and if I'm doing something else like recording a video, I'll just put a webcam or something like this. This just denotes what the file name is going to be on the video that comes out. It's also got a little setting set up here for telling you what's the month, year, day, hour, minute, second. So your videos, uh, you'll know what time you've recorded them. That's pretty helpful if you've recorded bulk video and you remember, hey, I recorded this like 40 minutes ago, I recorded this like 15 minutes ago, and I recorded this you know, and I was wearing all the same shirt and I don't know which videos in which order. So that's really helpful for stuff like that. And if you're streaming, you put a stream delay, but we're not covering that. And this rest of this stuff is for streaming. So that's going to be all for this video on the best OBS recording settings for 1080p, 30 FPS and 60 FPS. Let me know in the comment section down below if this video is helpful for you or if you have any questions relating to the video. Like I said, I'll be doing separate videos covering setting up like streaming settings and other things like that in the future. And also, just let us know if there's anything else you guys would like to see. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. And this has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level. Thank you for watching. Peace.